Okay, in this video for Google Ads training, we're going to go over specifically custom audience targeting. So one thing we wanted to point out specifically is the top three mistakes that people make when targeting custom audiences. Because if you do it wrong, it'll get thousands of clicks and they're a penny and they're on a bunch of apps and games and it's pretty much worthless like a lot of display network ads are if you don't set them up correctly so we're going to talk about the top three mistakes how to fix them and how to correctly target a custom audience so you're actually getting some profitable uh, display ad campaigns so we'll go ahead and jump right in this is our test account we use this in all of our training if you look at the links down below we have more info on our master classes where we, we break these down in, in much, much more detail. But I just want to jump into this quickly. So if you're not familiar, custom audiences is an option. Uh, it's an audience targeting option within the Google Display Network. So when you set it up, you set up your campaign to target the display network. Uh, and then you'd set up an ad group and then select audience over here. Now, a lot of people know we're marketing as an audience, but there's actually a lot of different audiences. The display network, you can either target by content, so what's on a site specifically, uh, or the audience, which is more following the person, no matter what website they're on. So you just go in here and do edit audience segments and put your audience right into here. So first off, the, the number one mistake people make with custom audiences is targeting too many targeting options at once. And we'll show you what that means here inside the account. So when you're creating your custom audiences, uh, again, if you're not familiar, it's up here, tools and settings, and then audience manager. And then you go up top, your data segments, that, that's gonna be remarketing and things like that. Custom segments is the one you'll click on here. We have a few example ones set up. So the number one mistake is people will come in here and, and put keywords and websites and interest and apps and so many other things. You really just want to focus on one at a time. So this one's going to be a real estate example, which there's a lot of different ways to target real estate. Uh, or you can even target you know someone that's in the in market shopping for something, buy keywords or buy different um, uh, websites they viewed and things like that. But this is just for illustration purposes is just going to be for real estate. So the segment name is keywords. Maybe you could do uh, buy houses or something like that. So instead of doing all these different targeting options at once, you'll just pick one. So this word is key. This one's going to be keywords. People who have searched for any of these on Google. Now be careful when you click on this, it actually shows you uh, a little bit more detail. It's it, they'll reach people who search for those and similar terms whatever that means. So it, it's kind of like a broad, broad match. So it's not they typed buy houses or house listings or something this morning, that exact term. They may have been looking for houses for sale. They may have looked at Zillow. They may have been uh, typed something for realtor.com. How much are houses selling for in my area? It, it, it's a broad, broad category. Just remember, this isn't exactly what they typed. So in this case, we'd only use keywords. The wrong way to do it would be to target too many things at the same time. It, Google has the suggestions and you can just keep clicking on this, add a ton of keywords and then also people that browse websites and then also people that use these apps uh, and just layering tons and tons and tons of targeting options. If this works, you don't know which one is working. There's too many at once. If it doesn't work, there's no way to troubleshoot it because you don't know where the bad traffic is coming from. This is the number one mistake people make when uh, trying to optimize or even set up custom audiences for the Google Display Network. It, it doesn't work well for PPC campaigns. It, it's not a good Google Ads strategy. You just you want this is too many things at once. Don't do your custom audiences like this. You'll want to pick one at a time. So one custom audience will be keywords, another one will be websites, and a different one, if you wanted to, would be apps. You'd, you'd make separate ones and they'd be separate campaigns or separate ad groups. That, that's the best way to optimize display campaigns in Google. So that's the number one mistake to avoid. Uh, the next one, well, actually on that note, Google will suggest doing things like this. 
you'll pretty much want to ignore whatever Google suggests. They're trying to get as much money as possible and as much volume because they're a for-profit company. They want to make more. So pretty much any advice you get, just get it besides Google. Uh, they're not really the best source to go to. So number two, too many keywords at once. People, again, if you put too many keywords in there, you don't know which ones are working and which ones aren't. So back to the setups, uh, there's people with any of these interest or purchase intentions that kind of crisscrosses with interest and uh, the affinity audiences for what, what type of things people like and they're into or purchase intentions, which they have in market. Uh, they already have those. I mean, you can type those. Those are a really, really broad audience, but uh, you typically do the people who search for any of these terms, which remember it also says or similar terms. So this is a very broad targeting option. Uh, but typically you'll do anywhere from two to maybe five at the most. You really don't do that many. You could even do one. Uh, so again, this is a realtor one. You can do buy houses, house listing, Zillow home for sale near me. Uh, this is just kind of some of Google's suggestions, some of what we've seen. Uh, but you could really use this for anything. If they're you know, looking up cars, you know, a, a different type of car or make or model, if they're looking for uh, used items or if they're in the market for software, uh, you can put in your specific type of software, or business loans, whatever it is, you can put that in here. It's, it's going beyond searches. You'll start with Google search and, and people type in these exact things and you bid on them. Uh, usually phrase and exact match to stay more specific, but this is, this is definitely a good option to have if you, uh, you're running an account for a client or it's your own account and you have a very large budget, this is a good thing to add on in addition to search campaigns. So you've got people that have searches, uh, searched things related to buying houses. So you'll do about two to five at the most and then that's it. If you get into a different theme completely, maybe selling a house, in this case, or people looking for a realtor, that's that's kind of a different, there'd be like a different ad group or a different campaign uh, in a, a Google search campaign, then you would make this into a different group. So don't don't put too many keywords in a custom audience, is it? then you don't know which one's working or which one's causing all the problems. So the third one, the biggest mistake people make with custom audiences and, and not optimizing their Google display campaigns correctly, too many websites at once because people put in uh, competitor websites or popular websites, but doing too many at once, again, it gets really flooded. So going back to the example, this could be competitor sites or directory sites or something like that. For a real estate example, maybe Zillow.com. That's a popular real estate website. Or uh, you can do a, a large industry publication if you're uh, in some type of software, or maybe you have marketing software, you have investing software, uh, you help people that, with their retirement accounts, you can put on a major website knowing that people, uh, again, it's browse websites similar to. It is not people that went on Zillow.com five minutes ago. It's people that went on Zillow or realtor.com or house listing websites or something about real estate. So remember, this is a very broad category, but it could be a good option. Maybe you put in uh, you know, something that, that's all about uh, retirement or planning retirement, and it'll, it'll show to people that are browsing websites that are similar to that site or sites about planning a retirement, and you're a company that helps people plan retirement and manage their accounts, things like that. So remember, it's, it's more of a theme. You can't type in your competitors' websites, and it will 100% target people that just went to your competitors' sites. It's sites similar to, uh, and the, the big thing with this is you'll do one at a time. You'll just target one, and if you want to do other ones, then you'll just do one at a time. So people browsing sites similar to Zillow, and then another one, realtor.com, and then homes.com, just to see what triggers it, or, or whatever major publication you want to do, not necessarily a competitor. You'd put that in here, and you target one website at a time. So those are the top three mistakes people make when using custom audiences in the Google Display Network. Uh, we have a lot more training 
in our master classes for Google search campaigns and uh, Google display campaigns. If you click on the link below, we have additional free training. You can join our newsletter, our community, uh, get a lot of free training and additional resources down in the description below. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching our PPC ads training video. Uh, if you want more videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, like this video if you found it useful and any questions post them in the comments down below uh, we also have additional training in the description so thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video